Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It is Mike here once again, and yes, I am in my kitchen because today's video is a bake with Mike video. I know, it's been a really long time. One of the reasons I'm in the kitchen today is because obviously I have started moving house and so packing is underway and I'm trying to find nice backdrops for you guys. And as this is a cooking video, I thought, why not stay at the scene of the crime? You know, why not? So today, I made a Nigella recipe, surprise, surprise, I know, I am a Nigella-aholic, and um, I thought it would be really, really nice to um, try a recipe that I haven't tried before. And this recipe today is an apple and almond cake. You can see it there. I don't know if I can bring it to you. Should I try and be elegant? Oh, look at that. Look at this. It has a rather delightful crack down the front. Oh. It smells good. It smells, um, cakey. It doesn't smell that sweet. I will say that about it, but, um, put it on my little stand. It's cooling, uh, because we're having it as dessert later. Is it nice and shot? Is it good there? Oh, my back just grazed the oven. It's rather warm. <laughs> it's fine. Let's start again. <laughs> um, yeah, um, yeah, uh, Jane. Can we cut that? I can't, I can't do this. <laughs> oh, Valerie Cherish. I miss her. Did anybody else watch the comeback? Oh my God, I've digressed. I think post Easter, after all that chocolate, and I'm not done with chocolate yet, I've still got multiple eggs under the stairs. Um, I say under the stairs, it's my pantry. Um, but I needed something which was not chocolate, but which also wasn't just like having some fruit. So fruit cake. Um, I'm not a big lover of cooked fruit normally, but this Nigella recipe, um, it was, uh, it, it appealed to me. I don't know, I like almond and pear desserts, and this was kind of a, a, a nice kind of side step. So, I'm going to refer to my phone now. I would normally show you the recipe um, in the book. It's from Nigella Feast. It's from the book called Feast. We only got that wrong. Um, but... I've packed my feast away. I will say a, a quick note about feast. It's not one of those books that I've used to cook from an awful lot. So I need to get on that. This is kind of my first proper delve into feast. This is apple and almond cake. And she says that it's astonishingly buttery, but there's no butter in it. So I'm intrigued by that. I will tell you later once I've tasted it. But I'm just gonna go through the ingredients and kind of what I did. So it's got in it. You, you actually make an apple puree to begin with on the hob. So you've got three eating apples, uh, one tablespoon of lemon juice, and two teaspoons of caster sugar. And you put them in a saucepan and you kind of let it come to a bubble, which you think it wouldn't because there's no liquid in there, but it does. And you let it bubble for 10 minutes until the apples are all soft and you kind of mash them. I used a potato masher. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Oh my God, this is such an innuendo for the video and I didn't even mean it to be, but there we are, such is my life. I used four little eating apples and they gave me a generous cup of puree, which is what the recipe says it wanted. Um, oven then was preheated to 180, 160 fan, 180 normal. Um, and my spring form tin was aligned with some paper at the bottom. Um, I use these like liners that you just slot into the pan. I just find them really useful. I, I never, I have to go around cutting bits of parchment paper up. It's just slip in, slip it in and get it in the oven. That is my life. So it's a ridiculously easy recipe, random, because it, again, there's no fat in this recipe. So you have got, I will run through the ingredients for you from the phone, eight large eggs. Yes, that's a lot of eggs. 325 grams of ground almonds but a note on that in a second. 275 grams of caster sugar, one tablespoon of lemon juice, and 50 grams of flaked almonds. A note on that too, because I, uh, you have to work with what you've got, guys, okay? So I had a bag of ground almonds, it was 200 grams. I looked online and it said that I could substitute the ground almonds for plain flour, because the only reason I'm using them is because of the recipe, it's not because of some um, uh, intolerance to wheat or anything. So I, put 125 grams of plain flour in with my 200 grams of ground almonds. 
Um, I didn't have any fake add-ons to put on the top, and I'm not a huge lover of them, and I'm going to see if I miss them. If it, if it needs crunch, we will see. Um, and I did add some vanilla, because I love vanilla in cake, and so I just put some vanilla in, a teaspoon. Uh, and you literally put it all into the blender, and blitz! Give it a whirl. And then you pour it into your tin, which it says here to grease with some oil, and I don't really have any oil, like flavourless oil. I've got some olive oil, extra virgin, but that's not really for that. So I just sprayed some Fry Light in the tin to make it not stick. Um, put it in the oven. It says here for 45 minutes, but check after 35. And I did check after 35, and I felt like it needed another 10 minutes in my oven, so it did go up to the full 45, and you've seen it. It looks like that. It came out really puffy. Um, with that beautiful crack along the top, and it has sunk as it's cooled. Um, I'm hoping that's a good thing. It says then best serve slightly warm, but it's still good cold. I mean, I'm gonna have it tonight after food, uh, which is probably gonna be Chinese, some sort of Chinese chickeny, mushroomy, teriyaki type thing with rice. That's what I'm feeling tonight uh, with Game of Thrones episode three, season eight, episode three. It's like the Battle of Winterfell. I don't know whether that's what the episode's called, but that's what the general plot is, and I am extremely excited about it. Oh my days. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm almost excited to the point of feeling sick, because last night we went to see Avengers Endgame, and that left me feeling, I mean, I'm so many emotions, but like I felt just drained physically after it, and I feel like tonight's gonna to be exactly the same thing. And Line of Duty was on last night, so it's all happening and there's lots of emotions, but I have cake to soothe me afterwards. It says here, but as you bring to the table, push a teaspoon of icing sugar through a fine sieve to give a light dusting. So I will give a dusting of icing sugar um, before I serve it, um, and I can't wait to let you know what it tastes like. I will let you guys know how it turns out. Thank you for watching this video guys. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and head on over to my channel and hit the subscribe button. You're gonna get videos from me every Tuesday and Friday. Videos about books, about life, films, baking, cooking, house, home, everything. Just me in video. That's what you're gonna get, you lucky so-and-sos. Um, <laughs> um, but thank you very much for watching and I will speak to you all soon. Bye.